Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. I knew you were coming back to our show because you were so excited about last time, our volume one of the nature of uh, surface and substance of the architecture of the University of Hawaii Manoa. So welcome back to Human Human Architecture here, broadcasting live from our sometimes educated exotic tropical paradise of Honolulu, Hawaii. And once again with your favorite uh, guest slash co-host, co-host slash guest, DeSoto Brown. Good afternoon to you. Bishop Museum historian. Thank and you. Myself, thank Martin you, thank Disbang. you. So we're gonna jump right in yeah. where we stopped last time. Yeah. Uh, last time was, we called it the, uh, and we're referring to this book, and you bad student have, you know, forgot your book again. So I, I forgot my you, textbook. I give you a third time, and then you get, I give you a D today, and next time if you forget it, you get an F. He's a teacher. Okay. He's a professor, he can say this. So things. anyway, so this is our source here. Whenever you see pictures, they're black and white. They're either from this book or even better, if they're better quality, they're from this guy here and from his precious archive at the Yay. Museum, right? Yay, that's and, right. And so we called the last show, we called it The Rise, and that was yep. basically from the end of second to last century till the late 50s. Yes. And this one we call the Thrive, and mm -hmm. Kobayashi calls it the Boom. Mm -hmm. And first picture up, please, how do you call that? Well, I refer to this as the Jet Age, and that's the time period after jets began to come here in 1959. That's also the time that Hawaii became a state, mm -hmm. and it was really the beginning of a huge economic boom. You just pointed out in our conversation how unique some of our architecture was at that time. We had the Kaiser Aluminum Dome at the Hawaiian Village Hotel. We had the La Ronde first rotating restaurant in the whole world yeah. on top of the Ala Moana building. And one of our favorite sites is the shot of uh, Miley, the character, in her travel agency office in the film Blue Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And in the background is a back projection of Kalakaua Avenue there across go. the street from the International Marketplace. So this just to put everything in, in, you know, in context for what happened on the island. So let's go back up the hill to the Manoa Valley. Yes. And the next picture, please. This is sort of a late entry to last show because this, as you can see, was late 50s here. And this is indeed the building when we charged us to go up and do field work and do, you know, real yeah. checking out. Yes. Uh, this is the first thing that was long. Two months ago, you came back with this and said, look what I found. Did yeah. You see these pictures. I sure did. Right? Yeah. And this, so, this is Keller Hall. But also, you know, we are little PIs, so we hear things, and we hear that this building here is up for a facelift. And we were saying, you know, buildings in, in the tropics here, they're beautiful, just like the people here. They don't need makeup. They, they don't. don't even need moisturizing cream. They just need a little suntan, mm -hmm. maybe the coral friendly of these days. That's right. right? That's right. So That's we're right. saying just clean them up and yes. don't, don't do yes. anything else with yes. them, right? Because these buildings are pretty much substantially beautiful. Yep. And let's go to the substance next picture. And the interior of this building has this remarkable stained glass work. And that is far out see out does any makeup that you could put on the building. Yeah, yeah. And you can see that there's this large atrium lobby that has got this multi-story uh, access to the stained glass. You pointed out it seems almost like a church. Yeah. There are seating areas on each floor. You pointed out that the corridors are, this is a double loaded mm -hmm. corridor, so it's really pretty generic. Mm -hmm. But we've also got the stairways that have the inserted small windows, which yeah. are all different on each yeah, landing. Yeah. And one of the things I think is the most remarkable in the upper right corner is the building is built intentionally not parallel. Yeah, yeah. So the stairways aren't parallel, they're at a slight angle. And yeah. that if you look down into that atrium with the uh, stained glass window, you can see that the, the yeah. railing is a yeah, little canted yeah, yeah. as well. And it's a very fine piece of very humble, subtle modernism. Architect is Clifford Young. We're gonna do a show with Mireille Turin who happened to stumble into a residential project by Clifford Young and ended up having an, a great impact. So she will report on that. So same kind of notion, very simple materials. I mean, the, the bars of the guardrail is basically simple filigree tees and, and everything is sort of simple but it's orchestrated in a beautiful way. And one of the things, the characteristics is you know, these grooved concrete walls that yeah. put some battens into the form, gave it structure. Yeah. So that's what it is. And we're saying just clean it up. If right. we go back to the previous picture one more time, because the, the, even the fenestration is still original, you know, to the north side, to the mall, 
it's got uh, even these vertical fins that we pointed out uh, Sinclair Library had to, you know, that very early morning and afternoon sun we get here is being blocked out a bit. Otherwise, it still has the jealousies, a uh, combination of the glass ones and the wooden ones, mm -hmm. and it has some nasty sort of carbuncle AC uh, it, boxes it, sticking it out. So maybe you take it, yeah. these away and sweat a little more, as we said, and mm -hmm. br just bring it back to the original, yeah. how it was, right? And you could not replicate that building exactly. today. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, respect it and right. almost don't touch it. I mean, right. touch it up, you know, but lightly. Don't mess it up. And authentically, right? Yes. So let's jump ahead to the two pictures ahead here which is uh, something we had reported about in a couple of shows that we referenced above. We had done a show with one of the users of the Halaminoa, and basically yeah. Will Bruder, you know, being stunned by the whole composition. And this is basically East West Center by the architect, international star architect to be and upcoming at that time, uh, I.M. Pei from the early 60s. And mostly, you know, it's this building here, Jefferson Hall and Halaminoa, but to the next picture, it actually, it's comprised of uh, other buildings here, as you yes. can see, these other dormitories and then Kennedy Theater. Yes. And you can see how it's sort of dominant it basically is at the corner left of that aerial view here. It's sort of this, this very strong composition of these very sort of, um, uh, I'd say sort of, um, you know, uh, probably even, um, you know, Louis Kahn-ish uh, sort mm -hmm. of, um, um, and, and Pei refers uh, yeah. to Lu Kahn quite a bit as, as one of his you know, influences and masters. And, and I would say, too, that the, the juxtaposition of Jefferson Hall and the Kennedy Theater mm -hmm. across a plaza from each other really accentuates that they're monumental, yeah. that they're really big and they're impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you pointed out earlier that, that the East-West Center, strictly speaking, is not part of the UH mm -hmm, system, mm -hmm. but the grounds are contiguous and yeah. you do circulate between the yeah. two. And we talked about, the, we like to call it synergy because down the yeah. road of East-West Center going to Dole Street is these, is these two slabs, that V-shaped, and get to the next picture. We did a show about that. These are the gateway dorms that follow just parallel. So there was probably, and these were local architects, great local guys, and Pei was a great national architect. So great symbiosis here and synergy. Yeah, yeah. Next picture is a late entry to, uh, no, this is actually showing the composition again from the other, and also shows like these sort of growing architectural mountains in the valley, you know, between yeah, the actual right. real mountains, that's right? right? So what that's a composition. Right. That's a right. late entry to, uh, from the previous era is the next uh, slide here. This is one yeah. of the local stars, again, this is Alfred Price. And we had a little hard time, that's our excuse too, that we didn't feature that the first time because we couldn't really figure out. Someone had told us that the picture on the, uh, you know, middle right uh, is, is, is the price, but then in the book, we didn't see, so Don Hibbert uh, lifted the secret and said it used to be the bookstore yes. at the very bottom left. Yes. And they have altered it, and you know, there's this really, on the left is this super nice concave wall feature, but they put this, you know, itself pretty nice portable right, right next to it, and you see the nasty AC machines. I think this, again, needs some serious cleanup. And we got some serious scholars here. There's, uh, you know, um, um, Jack Gilmer and my colleague Laura McGuire, together with Don Hibbert, writing a book about prize, and so, you know, there's an increased appreciation about this mm -hmm. uh, this architect. Mm -hmm. So UH, please be aware of that. Absolutely. Sort of bring it back to what it was. Yeah, right? and he's most famous for being the architect of the Arizona Memorial at Pearl Yeah, Park. and the, the only other client who treats Billings of it badly is the zoo, which I'm looking at in yeah. my front yard, and yeah. it seems like this is doomed to be like, mm -hmm. you know, demolition by denial. That's and it's right. On the, it's on the register, so hopefully not, but we need to teach that client too as well. That's right. So jump ahead, uh, go back to this building here, and that, that row, that color row of pictures at the second from the top is what intrigued us the most. And we're about to say this is one of our favorite buildings because this feels really tropical. There's our concrete walk wall, there is the palm trees, and then there is a single letter sign, right. and you feel like, wow, this is it. This couldn't be anywhere else in uh -huh. the world, right? Uh -huh. And it's sort of almost distracting you from that. That's just the little sort of, Correct. That's, you know, just, the, that's just the first, first it, it floor is. era. And behind that is a pretty chunky, pretty big building Correct. that's pretty international style, but it's designed exotically correct with large mm -hmm. um, you know, walkway lanai, mm -hmm. so it's, it's doing it right. Correct. But again, look at that, how it looked back in the past where there was this hyper enthusiasm about the cars and there was almost no vegetation, so it's right. actually better now correct. than it was way back, right? right? Right, and we're gonna touch on that in the, later in the program. Yeah, yeah, and let's move ahead. 
And there's some buildings, I know this well, because they take really good care for, uh, of me. This is the health service buildings here from 63. It's a very sort of a nondescript building, but very modern, like post and beam and breeze block, as you can see, and courtyards as a theme that we, that was the other thing you reported back. You said, I think there is a theme. Yeah. Courtyards is the theme. We're going to revisit that too. That's right? what I think too. Right. And uh, next picture is just like in the last show, we can't be uh, all inclusive here. There's no way we can no. cover it. So there's so no. many buildings that you guys got to get out and discover. Correct. And this might be one of them. This is the auxiliary service building that has the same sort of beam structure, uh, post, breeze block infill. Uh, and the lava plinth uh, that you point out. Correct, so, and the exposed rafters of the, um, the canopy exactly. that is out over the parking lot. And these lot. buildings feel very mid-century, very modern, Correct. very site-specific, very much about the place, not in yeah. a nostalgic sort right. of pre-contact way, but in a no. post-contact, but in a progressive way. And, right. and, and again, that's also space age, too. This is yeah, also from ta- that time period. And talking space age moves to the next project uh, here. Uh-huh. This is spacey in many ways. And <laughs> yeah, we refer, that's right. This is Kuykendall Hall, and we refer in the little pictures on the top right. We have featured that building sort of once in our uh, feature about tropical staircases. We yes. figured it out, and it was easy breezy. You had this Z-shaped, you know, um, um, you know form of the train. And then there is this sort of funky, very artistic uh, structure of the, of the post, the mushroom pillars reminded us of the show we did about the apartments that Obama uh, grew up in by Park Associates. And then the most commercial architect of America at that time, John Graham, did our, we already talked about La Ronde, and below La Ronde was the, the Alamana building. building that had these uh, vertical sun retractable louvers, so Kuykendall. Hall pretty much had that. Yeah. And there is another similar, and these louvers, and I have to say, a, a colleague of mine who um, uh, de- retired, uh, Steve Meter, you know, that was his project. He wanted to bring it back to, and, and he failed. And that's, that's a shame. It wasn't his fault. And you see these nasty AC things sticking out. Yeah. So to both clients, General Growth Properties and the Alamoana building and here at the university, please, please bring it back to the original. Uh, you know, update that and improve it because there was some fastening and some falling off Correct. issues originally. Right. But you right. can do this better today, right. right? Yeah, yeah, that's what we hope because the, the original deterior the original building deteriorated to where the louvers fell off, yeah. and that was the reason to yeah. remove all of them. Yeah, yeah, but there's no reason to bring it back because we're smarter now, right? The yes, technology we are. has progressed. That's right. And another similarity to our plateau of keeping Snyder Hall and yeah. not demolishing that is yeah. because this is the same architect, so please don't erase Correct. the trace of that architect. Right, right, right. And, um, you know, uh, just today, hot off the press and the uh, internet is that we try to get Sinclair Library, but it seems like there is an also very good, you know, yeah. use for New a student, student learning center or something like that. But yeah. for us architects, we then wouldn't couldn't have it anymore. So we might refocus on Snyder Hall Snyder again, Hall is your or, or any Hall. of the or any of these mid-century modern building uh, are are better than our Pomo piece of cake, and we'll talk about that in the next show. Yeah. So let's move on because now we have reached the late fifties. Uh, excuse me, late 60s, 60s, and this is how it it looked pretty much like that. And this is the era when Hawaii 5.0 started and was dwelling on uh, modern architecture as an actor, as we pointed out. Yes, it was, it was. So next picture here is then um, late 60s. This is Hamilton Library. You as a librarian know very well Mm -hmm. books need shade, they, they need it cool. They so do. this is maybe by nature of that typology, Correct. a more introverted per, uh, project, right. but nevertheless, very nice. You got the waffle ceilings yeah. um, as the um, uh, opera uh, concert hall has from yes. the, uh, Bla- uh, yes. East, um, uh, Blaisdell. Yes. And also um, uh, kind of a similar thing is Kennedy Theater, by mm-hmm. the way. They all have these sort of celebrated, um, right. you know, uplit, uh, basically yes. waffle slabs. Correct. So it's that's like the Washington Metro. That one, that one very that's much. Exactly, exactly talking exactly brutalism, same. thank that's, you for segueing because we're yes. getting into brutalism soon. Yes, we are. And there is the next uh, project here uh, is this one yeah. here. This is uh, familiar to us. This is Moore Hall. And, you know, Kobayashi had these sort of, you know, other faculty and grad students help writing the books. So there was a guy who was on the, on the review yeah, board of right. the building, and he was bitching about the architects having made the north facade, which is the one on the bottom right, having closed, and he had urged them to open this up because he said, well, it's, it's north. But also we get the very early morning sun and the late afternoon, so these vertical fins basically do the job. 
Not so much on the south side. This is why that little picture in the middle on the left is me when I was there for a little, yeah. volunteered for a German language test thing. Um, and, and so I saw the, 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 the curtains being pulled closed. So in the, uh, in the stairways that you like a lot because it's very exuberant, it's very yes. easy breezy, but again, yeah. it's facing east and west. So this is the most critical. So maybe replacing the glass with the fixed glass with mm -hmm. glass jealousies because that's the mm -hmm. perfect thing to keep mm -hmm. the rain out, yep. but let the air through. Now, particularly for a hallway where you're not trying to protect collections and you don't have exactly. papers and things like that. And I also like it has a wonderful zigzag canopy too, which is from that time period. Exactly. And it also has, no surprise, a courtyard. Yeah. And that's also very nice. And it had these huge lava rock bolsters. Mm -hmm. And it's very sort of googie and zigzaggy and yes, curved. It, it has these planters. So it's overall a very nice composition. And all these buildings, I mean, this criticism is very relative to an absolutely great, I mean, you can't, criticizing this is, is, is very sort of almost, uh, almost, I guess, illegitimate, uh, but you know, we're yeah. still saying, well, no, but, but good things you can, you can improve and you can absolutely. clean up and, and mm -hmm. you know, maybe exoticize them even more than they originally were, right? Correct. That's our point. Right. Next picture here, next project. Is, is And this is one that we found, we did a show about when you came back from your Tiki conference and yep. your keynote speech. This is one of the few sort of Tiki buildings mm -hmm. on campus. This is Krauss mm -hmm. Hall, which is uh, very, I took the picture on the top right just the other day, poking over that lava rock wall again from yeah. Wall Street. I see. And you see this sort of idyllic, you know, uh, right. oasis pond and it's very tranquil and it's very low key. And, and you know, um, when, um, you know, it just has this sort of, um, um, you know, feel of almost, we're talking here to our producer, almost high school feel, like high school yeah. or, or elementary yes, schools or does. kindergartens. It, it reminds know. me of my my elementary school years have yeah. always liked that. Yeah. But this is also a botany building, mm -hmm. and it is yeah. nice for that to be yeah. focused on an exterior scene uh, where you're seeing Plants. Yeah, and it seems customized to this nice Mr. Cross up there who was this botanist. So it's very low key, very humble, very yeah. tropical building, you know, yeah, very, very tropical. Very nice. So nice next, scale, too. Exactly. So, next picture is now we're going big because these were our local architects recently, and now we're going to architecture nationally. Yeah. This is uh, basically, as you can see, the biomedical science building from the early 70s. And this is a very uh, prominent at that time American architect, Edward Durrell Stone. Mm -hmm. Who, um, you know, looking back, he's sort of a little dismissed as a little sort of a funky, uh, sort of a flamboyant yeah. kind of gentleman architect. He did a lot of U.S. embassies, by the way, so oh, okay. he's very uh, okay. impactful. Yeah. I've seen, you know, in Nebraska in my days, he did the Stewart Museum, which is very similar actually to this one here. Mm -hmm. And one of my really favorite ones is in Chicago at Millennium Park, the original Standard Oil Building, then Emico, and I think now Eon, which is this sort of very sort of uh, slender. A square uh, plan extruded tower mm -hmm. that was clad in, in white marble mm -hmm. and was juxtaposing the dark sort of devilish Miesian, Mies van der Rohe ones, as there's the dark German and I'm the white and angel the, American. Yes, you yes. Know, I, I love that. <laughs> so he, uh, you know, and, and they were like in the book, they were saying this sort of, they found this sort of uh, pagoda, Chinese pagoda had a little funny and and the ornament but the ornament is is not literal like we do it Correct. these days with these chevrons it's right. just simple geometrics and Correct. you might see something alluding to mm -hmm. some asian culture but maybe not and it has courtyards and these courtyards are spectacular and it was so much fun to take these pictures for us right yeah and also the, it is in a very prominent location at the end of east west center road so i think it's appropriate to have a building that is, is that prominent and yeah. significant yeah. as something to look at as yeah. you look down the road yeah. and talking prominent next picture here we we're talking about previously about im pay sort of mass popularizing the Lucan mm -hmm. philosophy. For me, it's always the firm that did the same to uh, basically Mies van der Rohe just talking about him, Skid Mowings Merrill at this time. This is one of the, still is, and was one of the big players in architecture, yeah. national firm. So they yeah, came yeah, here, yeah. did Moorhall, mm -hmm. and Moorhall is also, you know, many say it's not one of the best uh, SOMs, but if you look at it, I, I appreciate and acknowledge the generosity of hallways of circulation, yeah. that not only there are these niches built in to sit, but you can say these, these hallways are so large that they allowed outdoor uh, learning. Yeah. Uh, um, and the fire marshal is still okay because you still got your you've three, got, four feet where you can to get egress. Yeah. And, and it has these two courtyards. And there are actually suggestions to basically uh, build more space and to enclose these two courtyards 
which I'm very much no. warning again. No. Uh, John Hera, about whom we t will talk uh, soon, has a nice uh, proposal with his daughter Mayumi right now to only enclose the courtyards within or densify within the square elevators. So yeah. he would actually uh, sort of get four little courtyards, yes, and I find yes. this very sensitive instead yes. of blocking the whole thing. Correct. This is something, again, it's, right. it's a very nice utilitarian, but in the recognition of outdoor space, also very tropical, exotic. And unfortunately, building. outdoor space often is seen as a waste. Absolutely. As That's why I'm to. saying very generous times. Right. right. Exactly. And we will see in the next show that wasn't the case call, anymore oh, when that era here ended. No. It was the opposite. Move on to the next picture here. This is, uh, we did a previous show, uh, Tonya Moy did here about uh, the architect Stephen Oyakawa, who did these dorms. And also, Will Bruder was very impressed. The architect worked for Frank Lord Riding and see that. When I talk to students who live in there, they acknowledge sort of these very funky shade uh, features mm -hmm. for the windows. Something we learned from that as far as critical assessment is that with a Primitiva, who is also a circular yeah, building, yeah, yeah. we gave it an interior courtyard. Yeah. That one doesn't have, so it yeah. gets a little stuffy in there. Yeah. But again, that's relative criticism to an awesome project right, here. Right. And Move, unique looking. Exactly. Too. Move on to the next one here. And this is Campus Center here. And Campus Center um, was uh, designed by uh, Ishihara, who um, was uh, working with Warnicke, who is the architect of our capital here. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is a project here that um, we will have Richard Lowe uh, talking actually about the word, the word wonder world, we will call it. So it's a different subject where we'll quiz him on that one here as well, because he's involved in so many things. So looking forward to that. I took that picture at the bottom left as sort of a post-occupancy evaluation mm -hmm. because that was one of the days when power was out on campus. Yeah. And people were basically escaping their interiorized hermetic right. AC classrooms because Stuffy. they were suffocating. Right. Right. And yeah. they went to, naturally, they gravitated towards these easy breezy spaces. Right. Right. And that was one. And then even when the power stayed out longer, some of the devices went out. And guess what? People started to talk to each other again <laughs> and breathe, right? And breathe. And wasn't that awesome? Yes. So moving on. And you know, this we're we're like now uh, truly in in the 70s, and yes. this is familiar to you because you live yes. in a house by that architect. Yeah. So this is Osipov, and I think is this the building that they just painted recently? As you unfortunately see yeah. the pictures on the, they do the spalding repair, so I can understand that you know you you're still in trouble and trying to keep the corrosion because there is enough concrete over right. the rebars. But at the bottom at the bottom right. They're painting the, the ceilings their way inside, and there's never humidity getting to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm afraid this is, they just want to put makeup on. We they go are back doing to makeup, that. And we have to ask, they're, they're saying, you know, Sid Snyder, who's the late partner of Asipov, who we had on the show over the summer, our Dokomomo members, we got to ask him because they claim he had okayed it. And it's just a shame because brutalism wants to be pure. Uh, there's, a, there's an awesome article by one of our previous yeah. showmasters, you know, Timothy Schuler, about mm -hmm. the brutes from the from the beach. That's right. And you guys all read that awesome article. Right. And when you did, you will never put makeup on a brutalist building. No. So no. I would almost say stop this here and now. I agree with you completely. You know. It's supposed to be raw concrete. Yeah. That's the whole purpose. Yeah. And and the next project is shows you to what extent. That sort of brutalist, um, you know, uh, tropical brutalism was infused into even the most sort of profane typologies as that big parking garage That's in Dole right. Street. They were even doing it to that one, and even that one has an awesome uh, courtyard. Yeah. Right. Next project here is uh, the arts building on campus here, and it's it's a building that was by um, you know group the beginning of Group Seventy, which is one of the yeah. biggest firms here, Group Seventy yeah. Lab. It was Gordon Teal, I remember he gave a talk story at Oklahoma, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was talking about how much fun they had. They basically outsourced the guy into teaching then to, because he was becoming too problematic and was sort of <laughs> interfering with the business of the firm. We have our <laughs> tropical tourism guest, uh, Suzanne, here, and she just gave me this, this shirt here. And thank you, and Suzanne. And it says Elvis in blue Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. And, and she points out that, you know, um, Good architecture, tropical exotic architecture on campus might be a USP, as they call it in her realm, a unique selling proposition, right? Yeah, and so I was you, just saying, too, that there isn't enough 
selling of architecture exactly. for tourism or promotion. There needs to be more of it in yeah. selected yeah. locations. We have a lot of outstanding buildings, and, and we're talking and, and, about And them. good news is that Docomomo just won the, the, the bid for the National Symposium next year in Yay. September, and it's going to be 500 guests and more. And lo most likely, UH will play a role. Of and, course, as it should. And we were saying, you know, in the next show, we point out we better continue that good legacy that's because right. otherwise, what do we have to show in the next 50 well, years? Well, that's so right? true. That's we'll so talk true. About that. So let's go to the next page here because we got to speak up. This is uh, Sakamaki Hall that, uh, you know, is a, is a simple, um, you know, uh, building here by the architect Robert Matsushita. And uh, I was walking by yesterday and I saw the low sun in the lower picture coming pretty, uh, you know, flat and, and heating it up. I was reading in the book again, they took a poetic uh, take on that and said it had some sort of mysterious uh, sort of notion to create it as the light, but it's certainly also overheating. But that courtyard makes up for it. Once again, it's very cool, mm -hmm. very jungly, yeah. very exotic, very nice piece. Next mm -hmm. one is uh, by the same architect, is, and we're exiting the 70s now, and, and we're going to yes. close the show with one of the early 80s. But we choose this one because it's still keeping up the integrity of the 70s and not doing what the 80s, unfortunately, became known for, which yeah. you see in the next show. And this is still a very nice building here. Once again, feature courtyard, right? right. And featuring shading devices and overhangs that basically, mm -hmm. you know, make it nicely and tropically work with exotic. The climate. And what does uh, as well work with the climate? Next picture, because here is our yeah. uh, landscape uh, enthusiast, our tree enthusiast. Our tree enthusiast. Correct. What does he have to say? Well, he has to point out that the uh, the campus of the UH Manoa campus has a lot of unique trees, a lot of interesting trees. They were planted specifically because it was uh, a place that studied botany of the tropics. Mm -hmm. But the trees themselves not only add to the campus, in some cases they are even more noticeable than some of the buildings are. Exactly. So they're an enhancement that is not just in the background, but sometimes you want to just look at the trees themselves because they are beautiful and yeah, significant absolutely. too. Absolutely. And let's phase out with one last uh, view here of architecture. It's almost non-architectural. It's almost like built trees, and most likely they're put under trees, and these are the little portables. Right. And you still find them all over campus, and they're like just single corridor, jealousies, easy breezy, hot air can rise up. In some cases, they've been sissy and put AC, yes, which they you can have. take out yes, again. They have. But these are great. These are great too. So these are part of the sort of genetic, exotic, tropical yeah, they are. code they of are. the campus as well. They are. So that was pretty much it. We hope to see you then in, in two weeks mm -hmm. with we, you know, we have to do the third of the That's trilogy. Right. And it's going to be called The Fall. We're sorry because you have the rise and the thrive, and then you have the fall, which is in some cultures, unfortunately, the destiny. Mm -hmm. But we will always close on positive notes, and we will then say in potential re rise. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. Next week, we're going to have a great combination of a former colleague of ours. Uh, Magi Sakimaki coming back from Australia to us and sharing the newly founded, um, they have a Gold Coast there too, yeah. and they opened uh, Dokomomo there. And we have Great. Laura McGuire, who's organizing our uh, coming up uh, Dokomomo walking tour, yeah, right. which is taking place in Kapilani Park. So yes. be excited about that one. And until then, please stay exotically educated, educatedly exotic. Bye-bye.